boom according to that i am live welcome to tokyo tonight too we are streaming uh, i am back sorry for the uh, bit of delayed start um hope everyone's well uh let me do the big boom intro there is the video there that is a lag and good to see mr cordy chapan sergeant bilko here and this boom that's tokyo tonight too so welcome um all the usual stuff latest Jap news from japan some maybe some music at the end um i've actually got some kind of cool news as well um some of you will recall um the show that i did on two and a half voyages with um oh, by the way we won't be able to do two and a half voyages for a while because victor is in america until when about like the 20th of august um so we are going to line up some shows when he gets back um, however you might recall that we did a show with a guy rob miller um a long time ago in fact i think it was uh when was it? it? Might have been at the end of last year, and um, yeah, after that show, he's helped out a lot of very cool people, including Tia Haygood and some other people. Set up some uh, businesses and run some projects, and you know, I, as I talked about with him when we were on the show live, I actually said I've got some ideas and some things I wanted to try, and I've basically spent the last eight months working on an app that is almost ready to go into a kind of a limited release. And then I might uh, release after that. That's right, Mr. Cordy Chap. You remember the guy with the martial arts stuff? He does uh, Wing Chun. He's, he, so he's a cool guy. And I've known him for a long time before he was doing the sort of helping people set up businesses. Um, and I've been very, very slow about it. But uh, uh, hey, Jess, uh, Jex, uh, Ashbolt, good to see you. Um, so um, yeah, it's kind of cool. The office rental man, indeed. Well, everyone remembers. So uh, good, old, good old Rob. You already remember Rob. He's been helping me out on uh, this little idea that I've had. Um, the idea give you a bit of a sneak preview if you watch I've always been frustrated hey Dex Max Bella good to have you along uh, I don't recognize the handle so welcome if this is the first time that you're joining this is part of the highlight is that I talk to you even if you don't want me to um, so thank you for commenting and saying hi um, I've always been very I'm a very lazy person and I'm always very frustrated that I have like a thousand subscriptions uh, just over the years uh, I follow back anyone who follows me I say hi I try to keep track of everybody and it just makes it impossible to keep up with my um, subscriptions and you know not many it's not like everyone in YouTube uses subscriptions um, I'd say it's kind of a pro feature maybe five percent of you maybe even less than that of people who use YouTube use but I've always wanted to make that feature a little bit better so we, we looked into what you can do with the API's and we made something really really cool so um probably in the next few weeks um, you'll start to see some more information come out about that it's taken a, a lot of development a lot of testing a lot of stuff it's been the first time i've done something like this that i own it's super super cool so watch this space um yeah it's really really cool and uh yeah rob, rob he he uh helped me with the parts you know he helped me flesh out the idea he kept me going when i probably would have shelved it um so yeah uh and mr cordy chip well that's exactly kind of the problem that's exactly part of it so sometimes you know you want to see news videos but you don't want your whole you know feed to get dominated by them so i kind of found a really cool way to do this um so yeah uh jex you set up a, a twitch channel and there's a bunch of cool things for your followers and subs I've seen that as well, and I've, I've contemplated playing around on that as well, just on the games, uh, also on, the, on the music aspect. But um, yeah, so anyway, I'll give another heads up at the end of that. Like, I'm almost ready to start sharing stuff about that, but just a little bit of a sneak peek that uh, among my many, many hobbies and projects, I've got one that after many, many months of patient working and debugging and doing lots of stuff is going to be looking pretty good. Um, Dex Max, you've been subscribed to me almost three years now. Well, wow, okay, well, it's, it's great to have you uh, in the comments. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hey, Ty Givens. Um, yeah, so that'll be super cool anyway. So a little bit of, bit of a sneak preview. We've got two Kumamons here, because I love Kumamon. I'm crazy about Kyushu. Um, so what are we on the topics this week? Stuff to talk about. I was going through this today. Um, so that is the show from last week. So what happened since last week? Uh, a review of the last week in Japan. Um, a, a, a US politics and news free zone because I, I can't cope with that stuff anymore I don't know about you guys but I seriously uh, am completely information overwhelmed by America and geez we've got enough interesting shit happening here anyway so let me take you to a parallel universe where everything is fine 
uh, in America and you care more about Japan because everything is just so boring in other countries. Uh, can I increase the size of the comments please? Says Quint Rankin. Sure thing. In fact, let me do that. Also, bear in mind the stream, well, if you've got good enough bandwidth, you should be able to get 1080p uh, on the live stream. Is that better? Do you want me to make it bigger, Quint? Uh, let me know. So, um, yes, Mr. Uh, Cordy Chap, there will be politics, uh, just not ja just not American politics. There'll be Japanese politics this week, because there always is. Um, but yes, that's right, just get, get used to the, uh, <laughs> the way that things are. Um, no, I'm not going to, although, now that you mention it, so that was last week, Ty. Uh, in fact, I did talk about that last week, I think. Um, it turns out, I talked about it briefly last week, and although it looks like it was a classic sort of a troll move at the same time, uh, she probably actually doesn't speak English. I mean, just because she could read a prepared speech. I mean, everyone studies it in school. But uh, I just made the comments a little bit bigger, so there we go. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, so this was kind of funny. This was a, a really cool guy, Geng Kanai. He shared this on Facebook from Twitter. And it's basically, you've heard of this uh, thing of uh, what English people really mean when they say, and it has this sort of thing how when, Europe, when, when English people talk with Europeans and they say, you know, with the greatest of respect. And, you know, what they really mean is... Um, I don't respect you at all, and how Europeans hear it is, oh, they respect me. Um, it's very similar, actually, this kind of very nuanced understatement of Japanese. And, and Gen Kanai is a very cool guy. He connected me with, uh, he introduced me to Noah Smith when he was in Japan. Big Twitter guy. Uh, he, he lives in China, and this is actually made by apparently Japanese people doing business in China. And it's a very similar dynamic to English people in Europe. So it's in Japanese, but let me talk you through because this is super funny. Um, so it's got three columns. Here it's got what Japanese people say. Uh, in the middle it's got what Japanese people really mean when they say that. And over here is what, uh, how Chinese people take it. Uh, so the first one is, uh, yeah, which is, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry, but, which means uh, what the Japanese person is really saying in that situation is, uh, I think that's wrong. I think that's not right. You know, it's like, ah, I'm sorry, but whereas how the Chinese person will take it is, oh, he's feeling really, really sorry, um, as you would, because that's what it sounds like. Um, the next one is, uh, so you no mo hitotsu no te da kedo. So that you know, which is uh, literally saying, uh, well, that certainly is one way of doing it. Uh, what they mean when they say that is. Uh, your way of doing it is wrong. It's problematic. How the Chinese hear it is, uh, oh, they're thinking about doing it our way. Great. <laughs> this is the problem when you are cross cultures and you're trying to be subtle and ironic. Uh, Japanese, naruhodo, naruhodo, I see. Uh, what Japanese really mean is they mean, I could care less, no den we. How Chinese people hear it is, oh, I convinced them, yes. Um, next one, ma sore wa ii toshite, which is, uh, okay, let, let's take that as being good, as being right. Let's take that as being right. So, uh, starting like that, it means yokunai, that's no good. <laughs> Chinese people take it as, oh, it's okay as it is. Uh, another good one, uh, tada wareware toshite wa dekirei ba, or Japanese say, uh, which means, uh, from our perspective, uh, if possible, Dot, dot, dot. Uh, when they're saying that, what that means is, um, this is our absolute bottom line. This is what you need to do for us as a bare minimum. Uh, Chinese will hear, yeah, if you've got any extra capacity, uh, this would be good, nice to have. That's how they take it. Um, so this is a problem again with the indirect communication style of Japanese. Sorry, uh, uh, I like this one. Sorry, uh, yeah, that was really, I mean, we failed, this is partly our fault, because we didn't really check enough. Uh, what that means is, um, this isn't our fault, we're, we're not in the wrong. <laughs> it's basically saying, you're wrong, but we're responsible to the extent that we didn't uh, check you. Uh, however, how it's heard is, is that, oh, they're saying it's their fault because they didn't check enough. <laughs> uh, next one, this is a classic. So this car, what can you must Oh, is that so? Understood. Uh, what that means is, I can't believe you. <laughs> and how it's heard is, uh, oh, they understand us. Another one. Saw this name. 
あ一度社内で検討してみます。あ OK, let's take this back、uh, to look at within the company sometime.、Uh, in Japanese, that means let's just pretend this conversation never happened. この話はなかったことに。And on the other side is, oh, we're about to sign the contract. That's how the Chinese would take that. Finally, ありがとうございました。Uh, what that means is dot. It's just a, a bookmark on the end of the conversation that means nothing. And what it means on the other side is that,、uh, oh, they really, really like us. Um, this was very, very well translated. I've shared this a few places, particularly,、uh, yeah, yeah, well, a few sites in here. It's got a lot of、uh, retweets and so on. It's very cl- cleverly done, very much like the English one. I see people talking about Aussie politics up here. What do we got up here? Can I get an amen?、Uh, so this is Olivia. Oh, Olivia D. Hey, Olivia D. Good to have you along.、Uh, about New Zealand politics, what's with all the unknown dual citizens?、Uh, do you think they're hiding it on purpose? Well, for a start, that's Australian politics, not New Zealand politics. Um, in New Zealand politics, you can be a national politician with dual citizenship, provided you don't pledge allegiance to the other country while you're being a, prime, uh, 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 a representative in parliament. So, with the Australians,、uh, do I think they were hiding it on purpose? No, I think pretty much all the cases、um, that have come up, even the, the, the racist guy who turns out to be born in India,、um, I don't think any of them knew, but this is the problem. When you allow everyone in Australia to be dual citizens, you have a rule against dual citizens being politician.、Uh, politicians. It creates this scenario where a lot of people who it's not something you normally need to check or worry about,、uh, it'll, fall through this, you know, the,、uh, it'll fall through the cracks. So,、um, yeah, do I, think, I think that they probably were innocently in the wrong, but talking with a lot of Australians about this, a lot of them really feel very passionately. It's like a speeding ticket. You are speeding, you know, those are the rules.、Uh, and they're even chasing some of them to get them to pay their、um, salaries back, which seems extreme and stupid to me. But,、um, you know, Australian politics is very insular, it's very island nation ish, it's very much like Japan in many ways. Um, and they're so aggressive. I mean, I couldn't even start with Australian politics because I just find it so scary. But、uh, that said,、uh, that's right. In Japan, they were far more lenient on the same issue than Australia, and it's prohibited in Japan as well. And it was the same situation. In Australia, two politicians were forced to resign. In Japan, le- became leader of the opposition. So, you know,、um, it's funny. Some people like to think that Japan is the backward one on this, and it's, it's really, you know, it's each country to their own, however. Uh, let's go. This, this Japanese thing, this is very fun. I, I enjoyed that.、Uh, does your streaming service have the programming you want? The reason I included this one is partly because of the project that I mentioned at the start of this video that I will be sharing with you guys、uh, in the very near future.、Um, but I think this comes down to exactly this question. Um, even when you pay for streaming services, you get great content. You know, like I, I, I sign up for Netflix because I love Better Call Saul. I love Master of None.、Um, in fact, Netflix has great content. I signed up for Amazon because I wanted to check out Man in the High Castle.、Um, a couple of other programs on there I watched.、Um, I like Apple TV, it's got lots of movies.、Um, but you've got to subscribe to lots of different things, which, you know, 99% of what's on each one of those services, I don't, I'm not really interested in watching.、Um, So, you know, you're trying to pick, pick and mix, and it's the same with YouTube. You know, you're trying to find the content, filter, you know, the, get to only the content that you want to watch. And、uh, it's hard to do because, of course, the whole idea of those platforms is they want to show you lots of content, you know, that you might want to watch that you don't know about yet.、Um, so it's very hard to, even with cable TV, you, you know, you, you want to subscribe to three channels, they give you a package of 50 channels, and you might be interested in four or five, but never all of them. Um, and it's the same in every case. And so, this is the problem that I am looking to address,、uh, which I will come back and give you more information on soon. But it's about trying to figure out how can I come home and turn on a TV with one click and just have it play、um, exactly what I want it to play.、Uh, that's the question.、Um, and yeah, yeah, it's kind of even the streaming services, I think, are good because you have more control, but it still is you know, not, not perfect like that. See, we have more people joining. Who have we got in here? We've got Mr. Cordy Chep still. We've got Robert Aldo. Good, good to have you along.、Um, we've got Triple J, Jinx's journey to Japan. Hey, you made it. Oh, and Jinx, I'm sorry that we, we missed each other the other week.、Uh, I've had a crazy couple of weeks as well. But、uh, yes, anyway, I hope you enjoyed your trip to Japan.、Um, if you're still around in Japan,、uh, it'd be cool to catch up for lunch. But、uh, anyway, you know, I hope you're having a good time. Herb Toka, hey, 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 indeed. Good to see you. Um, who else we got in here? We got、uh, boom, 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 boom.、Um, time 
flies indeed, Herb Tucker. Um, and yes, so we're caught up in the comments. Uh, oh, nearly at the end of the four week, uh, four weeks day. Really don't want to leave. Slight misspell there, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed your trip. Well, you know what I did. I came on a couple of trips and I stayed. I've been here 20 years. So um, yes. Uh, Mr. Gordy Chap, you're so negative about everything. I was <laughs> no, I, I believe that you, you are an institution, you're a fixture on, on, on the stream. So there we go. Uh, who else we got here? Apparently, so uh, Yoshiro Mori, this is an interesting one, and I'd like to ask you guys what you think in the comments. Um, he made a comment that when they do the opening ceremony for the 2020 Olympics, um, that it would be better to do Japanese culture that's understood, Japanese pop culture um, that's known around the world, something like manga or anime that's more universal, rather than uh, traditional Japanese arts like kabuki or sumo. And one, this is kind of surprising coming from Mori, who I think of as being, apart from being an idiot, he's also very conservative and traditional, and he was a he was a prime minister for the Conservative Party. So this kind of surprises me in a way. Uh, but there again, what he is proposing is that, you know, we should have the video game characters, the manga characters. It should be like a manga parade. And um, I know a lot of people think that's very cool, and I think that's very cool as well. But should you exclude Kabuki as part of the opening ceremony show or sumo? Um, I think Kabuki is like, um, you know, it's amazing. I mean, I don't understand how you could do an, in, an opening ceremony for the Tokyo Olympics without including that. Hey, Sam, I saw Raka Raka tonight. And I, I'm, I'm going to need counselling for that. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether to congratulate you or tell you that you should be ashamed. Uh, I guess the, I should, you, you should be ashamed, Tikyo Sam. But it was interesting. I can't say it was good, but it was interesting. But they're obviously very, very big. So uh, yes, you are in Australia right now. Um, that was kind of cool. I heard some almost, almost pretty good sounding Australian accents from Tikyo Sam. So yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, coming back to this, so what do you think? Do you think when um, Japan gets to do its own Olympic opening ceremony, should it include traditional Japanese uh, cultural things like, uh, like for example, kabuki, which I think done right can actually be really impactful, and of course is always going to be recognized as Japanese, and can be done in a way that can be transcendent, I think, that people could understand. Uh, or do you think it would be cooler to go for the old techno, modern pop culture thing? Um, it's been interesting as well that uh, Mori proposes using Draymond and Astro Boy. I love Astro Boy, by the way. I grew up watching Astro Boy in Singapore. Um, but a lot of people pointed out Astro Boy and particularly Draymond are not well known actually outside of Asia anyway. In fact, in um, a lot of Western countries, Draymond was specifically reviewed and prohibited from broadcast because it was thought of not promoting um, positive uh, educational values in kids. Um, for those of you, I guess if you watch this show, you probably know Doraemon is a, is a robot from the future sent back from the uh, debt burdened uh, ancestors of a young boy who just is such an incredible loser that he just ruins the lives of generations of his family into the future. So they design a, a robot cat to go back in time and basically bail out <coughs> this, this terrible kid who basically just get, keeps screwing things up and is lazy and uh, it's basically a complete failure of a human being and this, cat, this robot cat from the future goes around follows this kid around and bails him out of every situation uh, i.e. the kid never really learns to improve as a human being because he is constantly rescued by this, uh, this cat robot um, that, that's pretty much it and, and every Japanese person I've met has always said they want a dry one they want <laughs> They want a robot that would let them just be complete, you know, idiots and, and, and dickhead losers. Um, and this is why we don't know about it, because apparently, um, you know, uh, back in the old days when the networks controlled TV in Europe and America, um, they vetted Drymon and they thought it wasn't suitable for kids. Um, but that said, I don't know, I, I think the opening ceremony has to have this stuff, you know, like the, the sumo... The, um, kabuki, but what do you think? Um, I definitely want a robot cat from the future, that, that is true. Um, anyway, uh, 
Why Doraemon? Did I read the ending? Is there an ending to Doraemon? I thought it was still going. They've made like like 30 Doraemon movies. They're still putting out manga on that. I mean, I know that they... Uh, I mean, I'm sure that you did, Tikyo Sam, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's worth getting into uh, when you learn Japanese uh, culture, but uh, yes. Okay, them rescuing the elephant. I didn't know that Draymond rescued an elephant, but he could have put it in his pocket that contains anything. A lot of people always say, whenever Japanese want to start a philosophical discussion, one is that he has a tachycopter, like a helicopter that can attach on his head that he can fly around, but he also has a dokodemon door, an interdimensional door that you can he can pull out and go anywhere in time or space through walking through this door which begs the question why would you put a helicopter hat on to fly somewhere when you can just like use a door uh, and be much less effort and faster uh, okay well there we go we got the, we got the, the manga anime man in the house there Tiko Sam he's, uh, I'm, and I don't profess to be an expert at all on it but there is an official ending so there we go okay that's cool I can't think of I think Astro Boy had, had definitely had an end as well um, yeah, the title there is a little bit cut off. Uh, Japan treats one, this is in the Asahi Shinbun, treats one million foreign workers as non-existent. There are two million resident foreigners in Japan, one million foreign workers. Um, one million of those two million, nearly one million you know, of them are Azainichi. They're Chinese, Korean, North Koreans um, who are multi-generation born in Japan. Um, but in terms of immigrants, there's now more than a million of those as well. If you live in Tokyo, you will meet other foreigners every day at the very least in this situation in, in the convenience store um, there are always Chinese people and lately quite often Vietnamese uh, Filipino people as well in fact you you get a reminder really um, that uh, you know Gaijin maybe in the media have an image of being these glamorous you know Beverly Hills 90210 Westerners um, we are a tiny minority we are like of that two of those two million foreigners uh, English speakers make up about 30,000 people, um, you know, and we are disproportionately well paid, you know, and uh, have opportunities. We get free jobs pretty much from being able to speak English. Um, but the vast majority of foreigners are Brazilians, Filipinos, Vietnamese have come up in incredible numbers in recent years, Chinese, Korean. Um, we are way down the list. Even the Americans, the Americans are like 50,000 Americans in Japan, but you know, like. 30, 40,000 of those are military. So if you take military out, like people leading regular lives, and Tokyo is like 20,000, um, which is a really small town. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam, spoiler, spoiler alert there. Don't, are, you, are you giving away the end? Seriously, dude. Uh, well, I, I guess it's a lot of stuff to get through, but, uh, but yeah, it's good to see some people talking about basically... Um, <laughs> Japan is importing workers as it knows it needs to without really committing to the idea of integrating them. This has always been the problem with the Brazilian um, Japanese that were integrated into rural towns that have lost the jobs that they came in to fill. Um, and as I, you know, which is one of the more left-leaning uh, liberal papers, is pointing out, you know, you can't just have them come here. You need to figure out how to integrate them into the society, um, which is a good point. You know, uh, it's, it's natural for the Asahi perhaps to pick this subject up. They've always been particularly sort of pro uh, Korea friendly, China friendly. But yeah, it's good to see them uh, mentioning that. Let me just sniff for a minute. My nose is a little bit blocked. I like that. I can just mute, mute the mic there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't spoil King Kong either, Sam. I mean, but yes, uh, that's a whatever. So um, this is an interesting one. Japan is about to increase the price of beef. Uh, apparently, the local uh, beef production is just apparently it's uh, having trouble selling. Uh, prices have gone down due to a rush of imports. So they are going to increase the tariff to 50%. And this will affect American beef, Canadian beef, New Zealand beef, but not Australian beef, because Aussie beef is protected by a special trade, uh, free trade agreement which Japan has with Australia, which means that probably we're gonna get a lot more Aussie beef and a lot less American beef. Um, this didn't need to be this way if uh, we, Trump had just signed the already agreed TPP. Um, it would have been protected from this, um, but he thought that he could get a better deal for his farmers and it's kind of screwed New Zealand and the other countries which were expecting the TPP to happen but now we're redoing the treaty without America 
so we'll get the protection eventually but um, yeah the Australians uh, get to avoid this uh, it means that meat prices are gonna go up uh, can't be helped but yeah it kind of sucks if you're into beef anyway so look out that is coming uh, this is an interesting one this is written by Motoko Rich who is I think bureau chief for uh, New York Times in Japan and I find this interesting because there's been two really big pol political news stories this week maybe three um, although the first one sort of got taken over by the second and third ones but I mean the first one is is that the former Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda uh, who was um, he was the party secretary for the Democrats um, after basically getting destroyed in the national election um, and they should have completely like you know put him way back out of sight after he lost the election um, the new party leader Ren Ho who everyone hoped would be like a clean fresh start for the party decided to make the disastrous former prime minister the number two person the head of the party and uh, predictably the next big election that came up the Tokyo uh, prefectural election got destroyed as well um, so uh, he just resigned at the start of this week however later in the week uh, the leader of the party as well Ren Ho who's been leader for about the last two years now um, she also quit um, recognizing that she had sort of failed to regain public trust in the party which for me a big part of which is because she appointed Noda um, and a few days after that um, Tomomi Inada the uh, basically protege of Abe someone who Abe was trying to raise up into a position to be maybe the next Prime Minister um, and the Minister of Defense for Japan uh, she uh, also was forced to resign uh, in, a, in a scandal so um, different reasons for each one of these resignations but they all happen in a short period of time and the two in particular of interest of course the leader of the Democrats which came to overshadow the party secretary resignation um, and the uh, Minister of Defense and Motoko uh, Rich points out something which happens not just in Japan and not just in politics it kind of happens across society which is um, when you are trying to change when you're trying to affect positive social change uh, toward inclusion when you have uh, systems uh, be it in companies or society uh, which have uh, function to exclude uh, people from certain groups uh, for example uh, minorities or women um, as is pretty much the case around society I mean you know the world is set up to benefit um, you know in Japan regular Japanese men uh, where I'm from people like me uh, the system set up to benefit us and you know and, and has always worked to exclude disproportionately minorities and women and so a lot of companies and a lot of uh, countries are trying to set up to uh, try to correct and, and, and get a balance that's more representative of the minorities and the women and the society in their own professions and leadership and companies um, in politics by trying to accelerate um, role models um, to pick out particularly talented or sort of rising star women and maybe rather than accelerating them faster than they would normally be accelerated uh, rising up as men for example um, in order to create sort of lighthouse examples that other women can hopefully be inspired to or other minorities could be inspired to uh, follow um, so as a case in law school in New Zealand we, you, we, we have affirmative action in New Zealand and the idea is, um, is to kind of seed the idea that um, you know by, by making becoming a lawyer uh, you know for example uh, uh, an option to somebody who's bright enough to do it but would you know doesn't think of their worldview doesn't include that as a feasible option you get a few people to sort of blaze the trail on that and then you get a lot more people coming through and pursuing that more proactively as an option so in politics you know Abe I think to his credit raised up Inada um, quite fast um, but frankly, she, you know, there's an analysis that uh, w which is being raised in the New York Times here. Sometimes when you take people up, you're, you're so desperate to create these examples um, that you raise people up before they're ready and they can't really handle them. And then when they fail in those roles, it actually becomes more damaging <laughs> than positive. Uh, and that's what she's suggesting that the hopes for women in political power could be set back by the fact that the female leader of the opposition and the cabinet member uh, minister for defense both resigned this week partly because they had trouble meeting the expectations that were there you know that they were that accelerated into these roles um, so on that everyone's running out of batteries 
recharge, recharge. So I've always thought this is an interesting question. It's really the fundamental aspect of uh, affirmative action, you know, positive, uh, positive discrimination. Uh, you might say, you know, companies are looking for women to put on their boards, um, you know, or in leadership positions. I've observed this in companies uh, as well, where um, companies where, for example, the sales forces have been 95% men. Uh, and wanting to correct that, they've they've taken like a basically a, a, a mid-ranked woman that they saw who was doing okay, and they they thrust her right up into a senior management role, well, and she was completely overwhelmed by it, and it did reinforce a view for some people that oh you see that's why we don't have women senior leaders. Um, so is the strategy wrong or damaging? I don't think it is. I think in the end of the day. Um, I think what they're trying to achieve and, and, and what affirmative action tries to achieve is worthwhile and I think that's the way to do it. I mean, in the end of the day, you have to have some role models that make that, that you have to change, in order to change the reality uh, and to make that seem feasible, you, you've got to kind of plug away there at getting some leaders until you sort of create such a, you know, until you normalize it. Um, and it's definitely not normalized in Japanese politics for women to be politicians. It's less than 13% of politicians are women, you know, when they're 50% of the society. And to encourage more women to take that, you know, that option, you need more people to go and sort of blaze the trail on it. And uh, to the extent, and Abe deserves credit, you know, he did what Noda, what, what the Democrats didn't do. Um, you know, he, he set goals for, for including more women in politics. And it's a smart political move as well, because, of course, 50% of women, you know, are 50% of voters. You know, 50% of the population are women who vote. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think myself, I had high hopes for Obuchi, who, uh, you know, is an heiress. Her father was a former prime minister, and it looks like she was being looked after by his uh, associates who did some dodgy accounting that buried her in a scandal and she disappeared but I thought she was going to be good um, Inada I, I honestly speaking never liked she's had a bunch of scandals including covering up some defense uh, logs and so on some ministers some sort of uh, public some information that was supposed to be published from the peacekeeping logs in Sudan that she permitted it seems to be covered up but she was also linked to a bunch of the other scandals going on with the administration at the moment and she's just not very good at speaking in parliament she she does a lot of gaffes and uh yeah that was a shame i also don't like the other cabinet or close to cabinet choices as, as someone to replace her as a, the role model woman leader at the moment uh, sanai takaichi i think is insane um you know uh, there are better people out there for the you know to be that role model role but these are people that are bit picks and frankly the men are of course no better but you know you put a lot more attention on the women and you hope that they're successful so i don't know on this it's sort of uh, i think abe still deserves some credit for appointing inada even if she wasn't really completely ready for it and uh he should also continue doing that i think and with the democrats as well i don't think this proves um, that women can't do these roles. I, I think the risk that some people are worried about. Um, Motoko Rich in this article in New York Times, she also talks about how our feminists often don't like the women who get through. They say that they're too, they're not feminist enough or they're too masculine. They sold out acting like men in order to be successful among men. I always feel like that's a terrible way. <laughs> that's actually saying that, you know, it's not that, it shows them to be ingenuine people who say that it's like, it, it, do you want women to rise up or do you want only women that agree with you to rise up it's sort of like um, I think you have to start somewhere um, so I don't know I hope this isn't the end I really had high hopes for Ren Hall um, and I think you know again she felt like she had to go with the flow with the party machine and that was exactly what you know voters didn't want I hope that they find I hope that she still finds a way to succeed in the party and that other people coming up have the chance but we'll see uh, Jake Ashbolt, you never understood that reason uh, so does 50% of women vote for women because they're women or because they perceive them as being competent oh I see so uh, oh, I'm, try I'm trying to catch the question the reason that Jake Sashbold is ra raising oh well this is a big criticism of Thatcher you know I mean how many feminists particularly in commonwealth countries when uh, they talk about how Britain does, is not very inclusive of disproportionate uninclusive of women in politics and the moment you say, well, it was Thatcher, all the feminists go, oh, no, she was practically a man. <laughs> um, 
and some people people say that was kind of proof that you need to be masculine or have masculine tendencies to be successful in politics but no she wasn't a man she was a woman she just wasn't a woman that you know um that those women wanted to have um i think it shows hypocrisy when you say that um <laughs> But uh, I'm trying to come back and try to catch some of these questions here. Uh, serious question from Tokyo Sam. Do I see Japan making actual changes in the future? Legalize gay marriage, weed, and more females in higher positions? Uh, I'll take all of those. Uh, yes, yes it is, and it's plugging away. I mean, Abe, again, I don't like him, but I think he's making a real effort to um, uh, increase representation. I think that is going to happen. You're going to see more. Uh, gay marriage is already happening, and I think that will happen nationwide, but it certainly is happening on a local government level already. It'll happen more likely to happen in Japan because there's no Christian sin moral, moral outrage aspect to it. It's just a where there's objection to gay marriage in Japan, it's just that it's like weird, it's not normal for some people, but it's not that there's like a sin aspect attached to it or a, a moral religious righteousness aspect. So I think that will happen. Um, weed, weed is an interesting one as you know weed has always been legal in japan has always been kind of a perfectly normal part of japan it grows wild in japan japan is a native species of weed um, it wasn't until ghq that hemp the hemp industry and the weed industry in japan was shut down and outlawed uh, because they wanted to sell synthetics in japan and they wanted to make the laws in japan compatible with u.s laws that said the taboo around weed is so strong the idea of turning that back in the society even though in some ways i mean Aki abe is a, a spokesperson for the hemp industry the emperor himself the showa emperor was a spokesperson for the hemp industry um, so i think it is possible to reverse but the idea of timer of the actual uh, illegal narcotic weed um this the stigma on that is so strong i think japan might be one of the last countries to, to reverse on that uh but yeah and the um let me come back and more females in higher positions. Japan is working on it right now and is struggling with it, but I think that they should persist and it is happening. Uh, every every Japanese board at the moment um, is trying to get women on their boards because they're, in, they're aware of the negative international uh, attention that it draws, their, their, their lack of diversity, and same in politics. They're doing it because they know even if they don't like it or they're uncomfortable with it or they disagree with it, they know that they have to do it. Um, so it is definitely happening. Uh, we guys in we definitely not well yeah I, I, I think on the drug the regulation of the drug weed I think it's gonna happen after a lot of other countries but, but I don't know him hemp is actually you can get him beer like hemp is grown in Japan so him might happen it might be deregulated sooner uh, but for medicinal stuff yeah yeah I again I think uh, I think you'll find that Japanese lawmakers will be very conservative on that and it'll happen last here, unfortunately. Um, interesting one here, a Korean school uh, won a court case. Uh, this is for a Cho Sen Gakko, you can see on the um, sign there. It's for a, an anti-discrimination lawsuit where I believe in, it wasn't in Kyoto, was it? It was, where was it? Um, uh, Higashi Osaka, well, it's in Osaka. So Osaka is a very large North Korean community and uh, they run their own schools. They set up their own schools which actually uh, teach in Korean, um, Korean uh, culture, heritage, um, because the um, uh, those schools have always struggled to, for funding. They, they did not receive government subsidies. The North Korean government subsidized those schools, including a lot of their textbooks, which is why it's kind of famous. I don't know if it's still the case, but it always used to be that you go into those schools they have portraits in every room of the North Korean leaders and they teach North Korean syllabus um, to their kids who are often fourth and fifth generation born in Japan um, North Korean kids they're kids of North Korean ancestry but they are fourth fifth generation Japanese but um, there are there is like three four hundred thousand of these kids in Japanese society big group or, or not just kids people who have grown up with basically North Korean education I mean ideological as well um, and it's kind of funny. I mean, I always think it's uh, it is interesting to, to see how those people function in a society. They're brought up a little, you know, in, in, in half isolation inside these very tight North Korean communities and Korean ethnic Korean communities. But at the same time, the way that they are educated is so so different to the rest of the society, and it makes you think: How do you walk out of a North Korean school syllabus class into Shibuya, for example? 
uh, into the rest of Japan. How do you reconcile that? And it's actually a subject of a number of very interesting documentaries in Japan. Um, however, so apparently um, some schools, and particularly in Osaka, which tends to be very liberal and uh, supportive of the North Korean community, they gave them uh, some tax-based subsidies that they give to regular schools. Uh, they, they gave them to the North Korean school to subsidize um, the cost of education for those people. However, when the conservative uh, government uh, of Osaka came in, uh, or a more conservative government came in, they, they said it was ridiculous to use taxpayers' money to fund um, what is seen in Japan perhaps as brainwashing, or at least of, uh, of providing North Korean education to residents, to local residents. Um, they, if they want it, they can have it, but they just have to pay for it themselves. Uh, and this was taken as discriminatory um, against the North Koreans. So they brought a lawsuit and the court found in their favour the, the, the taxes the government has to fund the North Korean education. I personally find this really strange. I mean, there are lots of Russians and people of Russian heritage in America, but the idea that during the Cold War they would, that, that you know, school boards would be, or school districts would be forced to fund uh, communist uh, Soviet schools in America, it's the same thing. I mean, it's even more extreme than that in some ways. Um, again, uh, if you think that Japan isn't liberal, welcome to the court system. It, it, Japan's plenty liberal. It's actually, in some ways, it's kind of encouraging that they have these kind of decisions. But I, even for me, this is too much. I'm not against North Koreans being able to educate themselves. But the idea that, um, you know, if they want tax funding, do the national syllabus. You know, integrate these people into the society. Don't, don't you know... Um, I don't know, I, mean, I guess what, what happens to Amish schools get tax funding? Uh, you know, in a way it's the same thing. They're being isolated from society. They're being taught a sort of old German language and values that are really incompatible in a lot of ways with modern America, like intentionally. Um, do they get tax funding? I mean, I'd be surprised if they did. Um, but there again, everyone's entitled to an education. You know, and should they be discriminated against? So it's an interesting question. Um, do, should the American schools, uh, which are very, very expensive, uh, like $20,000 a year to send kids for finger painting pretty much in the first few years, should they be uh, tax funded? Uh, I, would, I would oppose that. <laughs> so there we go. Um, Jake's Ashpole, I don't actually know much about how the Amish are uh, homeschooled. I guess where they have Amish communities, I'm guessing that they are educated in schools within those communities rather than homeschooled. Uh, I guess if you're an Amish who lives by by, the, by yourself, uh, maybe not. Hey, Shubas from Panama, good to have you along. Um, <laughs> take your Sam, I'm kind of with you on that. Um, but yes, I thought that was interesting. Apparently no one has joined Twitter for months and I'm not surprised. I mean, Twitter's importance has gone up. But um, uh, I guess I'm not going to talk about American politics, but uh, yes, Twitter's gone a little bit nuts lately. It is a shame because I do love the platform, um, but yes, I just want to click my heels together and say there's no place like home and for everything to go back to normal, please. Uh, Fuji Rock Festival. I've, always, I've said so many times how this festival changed my life. I went there for a number of years in a row, camping up in the mountains. It's huge, it's an amazing, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know what the, the, the American and European rock festivals are like, but uh, in complete ignorance, I say this is the best music festival in the world. It's just awesome. Uh, and it's going to be in VR this year, so um, there we go. It's a good way to get to know that. Hey, Amber, good to see you. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's good to know that they're doing this. This is Inada. She is the, the person in the cabinet who quit recently. And, uh, yeah, this is a big blow for Abe, but, you know, um, she, had, she had to do it. There was no avoiding it. She was wrapped up in a number of scandals. But um, at the same time, uh, they should plug away. They should keep trying to push ahead women until, they, you know, it solidifies it, until it catches and you get more people coming in to the system and you get better choices. Um, there's the other one, Renho. She uh, also uh, resigned. Um, and you know what? That is the end of the subjects, I think, because the Blues... De oh, so this is interesting. Where my, my team, the Auckland rugby team, the Auckland Blues, uh, were defeated by the Japan Sunwolves rugby team, uh, which I went to go and watch, the 48-21 humiliation. Um, apparently, based on betting odds, this was like actually the biggest... Uh, if you got and place $5 on this game in the legal sports betting that we have in New Zealand, uh, it would have been... Uh, stupid ad. 29.5 point favorites. Uh, 
Yeah, so they were installed as favourites to win by 29.5. They were 15 to 1. So you would have made 15 times your money if uh, you bet anything on the Blues, uh, on the Sunwolves winning that game, which they did. So there we go. Um, so that is cool. Um, we're out of time. As I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat. Um, I'm making an app, and it's going to be coming out pretty soon, and it will. It has to do with uh, making it much, much easier to organize and watch YouTube without having to click around all over the place. Uh, it's going to be super awesome. You will get more information about it soon. I've been working on it for months with Rob Miller, the guy with the uh, the workspace and the, 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 the martial arts guy. He's been helping me for about eight months now, and it's getting kind of close. So. Um, I'm going to start putting out little dribs and drabs of that as it gets close to coming out. Um, and yes, that will be amazing. That will be awesome. Uh, the Crows match. Uh, you, you're watching Aussie Rules, right? Uh, TKSM, I'm talking rugby. I don't get to watch AFL anymore. Uh, since you are watching AFL, you have to support the Geelong Cats. Uh, they are the team. I used to live near Geelong. I also used to live near Essendon, actually. I lived in uh, Sorrento, which is close to Frankston, Essendon. So the Bombers or the, the Cats, but the Cats are where I, I, I became a fan as a kid. The Crows, now they're the Adelaide, right? South Australia. Anyway, that is exactly right. The, the secret, all you need to know is that it's awesome and it will be available uh, soon. So check that out. I'm going to make some music. Tell me right now as I set it up, what sort of music should I make? Should I make hip hop? Should I make uh, drum and bass? Should I make house music or techno? Three styles, techno, house, or uh, or drum and bass. Well, let me set this up. Boom, 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 boom. So uh, the screen is not fully fitting at the moment. I could switch modes, but then the comments get screwed up. Techno trance. Um, I'm on Van Buren stuff. Okay, well, let's give that a let's give that a try. Um, give me a sec. I have to plug in the sound and plug in an earphone. Stone. <laughs> Techno it is. Okay, let me turn on the input sound.
I say no, we don't talk about that. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, yes, I'm sorry for those who, who were caught out. Uh, Lysander 45, Nicholas Keto. That was, um, yes, I've been starting from 10.30 to 11.30 until the soccer starts again. I have to do it a little bit earlier and wrap up a little bit earlier. I've got to wrap up now. It's been awesome having you guys come along. That's not a bad track. It's a bit 80s housey. Right. Save that and play around with it some more. I'll keep that going in the background. Um, Thank you for joining, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, stay tuned, there'll be more shows like this. There'll be more news coming up with the super awesome app, which I'll be sharing soon. Um, eight months, I've been crashing bugs and planning out, and uh, the plan is coming together, so I can't wait to share that with you. Um, come back every every Sunday, uh, 10.30, uh, until for at least the next couple of months. Um, hear the latest on Japan, what's going on in the world, uh, enjoy the company, have a chat with all the people in the, in the comments there, Jinx, I hope you enjoyed your, your stay in Japan, 
uh, surf trip back and um, hey see all you guys again next week thank you for joining and boom peace ending the show with one click I'm going to show you the button oh there we go wait a minute it's like click let me see if I can bring that there it is stop streaming see you later